Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to another episode by the Pokemonster. And for today I was watching the EUIC Day 1 uh, International Championships. It is the first championship in which you are allowed to play the Temporal Forces Pokemon cards. And while watching a few games being played out, I thought, okay, let's dive into the bulk box and sort some cards in a better way. I put some cards in top loaders. Uh, let's do another, just a quality check, a condition check of the cards. So currently it is very interesting. Owen Cameraman and Dutchman, let's go Owen, is playing against Dennis Sengis. And Owen is playing a Shampoo deck, Shampoo EX, versus a Charizard EX deck by Dennis. So um, yes, again, I'm just wanting to give you some updates while we go over a pile of cards that is in top loaders and hope everybody enjoys. And I think I will continue for one match. One match, uh, Swiss round two is currently going on. I'm not sure, I can give you updates in the meantime. And let's take a look at some cards, guys. Currently, we are still in 0-0. Zero, zero. No one has won. Both players have taken two prize cards. Charizard EX very playable, like I said. Dennis is playing the Charizard EX deck. I'm very excited for Temporal Forces now being a tournament legal. And it's also nice to make some speculations on some of the cards. For example, I, pay, I purchased some Coridons and Roaring Moons from Temporal Forces. That mail day is uh, coming, coming up in the future. I tried to create some content uh, for every Wednesday. I had spare time to do an actual video on the moment itself during the EUIC now, for example. So what we have here, what I'm going, to, uh, th those cards I'm trying to sell, I'm going to thin out the collection a bit, make some more space for some more full art Pokemon cards and full art trainer purchases. I haven't purchased a lot of cards. Now in upcoming videos you might hear me say that I still had purchased some cards or rather maybe I already said the incoming flow of envelopes is a bit lower. That is because I have now over, over, how do you say? Maybe over leveraged a bit in Pokemon. That's why I'm going to, trying to sell cards. The selling is not going that well either so there is basically no money to buy stuff. To be honest, I have some investments in Pokemon like the Lost Origin booster boxes that went crazy. I paid 120 a piece and they're now rising up to 200 a piece per booster box. It is very tempting to sell. I'm not going to sell. There is a lot more Pokemon card investments that I did that I wish I had sold at the right moment. I haven't sold anything that basically went up and then it went down and I still didn't sell it. I think it's a, for me it's a long term investment and what do I want to do if I'm going to sell a lost origin booster box I have 200 bucks 80 bucks profit I can buy two obsidian flames boost boxes but who knows what happens in the scarlet violet era right so that is basically the first time during the digimon opening that I also openly spoke about my lost origin booster box investment I don't have that many maybe one case or so couple of loose booster boxes um yeah i don't think you should put all your cards on the table in one game if that is how you say it you should just uh like i said earlier in earlier episodes i'm just going to release content over time of my collection the collection might change in the meantime as well like those cards might be sold next week if i am lucky and then there will be new envelopes coming in during the mail days. I might put some cards up for sale a bit cheaper than I have them now. I am not in a rush to sell stuff. I'm not fire selling stuff. I'm not trying to make a profit either, but I want a, a normal buck for my card. Those are all like one to two buck cards. Real investors don't really care about all this small money, but I do in the first especially the first two years of collecting I put my heart and soul in collecting these kind of cards I had really way less money and yeah they, those are good memories for me but I still want to get rid of them to get some space and to buy new cards as well and I rather sell the low-hanging fruits 
then uh, the real main piece of the cake which are the booster boxes and ETBs too I think uh, yeah and some four trainers that is where my where I put my most money in the four trainers booster boxes right. I really like these kind of cards guys I have a couple more definitely in the binder here we have Frost Moth and Melanie, very nice. And Jasmine and Bronson. Bronson? Bronson? I don't know, you tell me. Those are really nice cards. I was really hesitating to whether to sell them or not. I did, because I have a couple of each. And who won the first game? It seems like the first game is now uh, passed. Oh yeah, this is, was a uh, part of my project at the start. The top loaders are not that clean, but you see an H here. I first tried to separate the cards that I want to sell by using top loaders. Now you can see I'm using normal card dividers. If you use four rows of top loaders, by the way, I might do how to collect the Pokemon, how to collect Pokemon cards, how to manage Pokemon card collection, etc. But now a small tip: if you have four rows of your top loaders, it will basically shatter the box. Yeah. It will shatter the box. The boxes are not made with the width of the top loaders. To have four rows with that. Might get bent. So hang on. Someone. I just got a, received a message. Someone might want to purchase a Funko Pop. Be right back. Okay. So I'm fairly excited guys. I purchased this one for 60 bucks. Quite some time ago. I had it up for sale now for 60 for two weeks, two months rather. I want to um, yeah, thin out my Funko Pop collection just as I want to get rid of some of the Pokemon cards. And it is still sealed, limited to 25,000 pieces. Good seal, bit dusty. Um, yeah, I don't want this one anymore in the collection, so someone offered me 50. I say maybe we can do still 60 but then uh, free shipping so let's see how that goes and uh, let's continue with the Pokemon card story not everything in your collection will rise in value unfortunately like I always say you really have to make be prepared to make choices as well at the moment that you invest money in something I think Funko is not entirely dead but you watch so many people talk about the decline of the value. At least I was confronted with all those messages and videos uh, in the feed as well. Uh, I think personally it's not entirely dead. I don't think you should sell your collection. But I purchased so much stuff for one reason or the other. Sometimes because it was on discount. Sometimes because I would like it more than I actually did when I received it. So this 54 bucks rather. I'm going to spend definitely in some more Pokemon cards. Or perhaps some other Funko Pops as well guys. There are some Spider-Man Funko Pops that I'm way more a fan of than the Joker. Now I saw that there is actually a Joker Part 2 movie coming guys with harley quinn i'm a pretty much a harley quinn fan too sorry some nice cards though but it is still all bulk some people consider i, I consider cards below one buck being bulk some people even consider cards below three bucks being bulk or below five bucks well i'm not on that level yet i think everything below a buck is bulk and this is i put it in the bulk pile but i think this is still uh, these are still nice cards. So do you collect guys more than only Pokemon cards or do you not even collect Pokemon cards? How did you find my video? I'm very excited about that. Are you a true player of the TCG? I mean Owen Cameraman just won his first game. I played the TCG a lot, really like sometimes 12 hours a day and then multiple days a week. In 2022, at the end of 2022, I was also, without bragging, but I was fifth, ranked fifth of Europe. I think that is uh, something that you can be proud of. Spend a lot of time trying to reach that. I have met some really good players. Uh, the, the, the TCG is really fun. It is time consuming because it, uh, you have the rotations and so many new cards coming every time. 
I now am more a casual player. Maybe I um, want to visit the World Championships as a spectator. Uh, there is a two here. It is on the top loader. I have a couple of these. Detective Pikachu, the Dusk Noir. Nice. Seal Valley. Professor Research. Yeah, there are some staple cards, like I said as well. Um, I might want to start speculate a bit more on playable cards and try to sell them. Um, as, as, as soon as I start to really go sell cards immediately or purchase cards rather to sell them, I might want to think to uh, start uh, register myself as a company. That's something that sounds like music in my ears. It might take a really long time, uh, like a year or two. I'm currently trying to make a plan and write everything down. What I want to do in the future, if I want to start a Pokemon card store. You hear good stories, you hear bad stories. Yeah, it, it is a lot of work without a lot of profit, but I like doing videos like these for example i would like to build up an audience get a little more um insight in the overhead costs right now i'm currently sitting in the attic but i'm not sure if you can start a store from there although there are people that are doing it purely selling online credits to them as well so we have some really nice cards here some older sets darkness ablaze rose all right, barrier. Yeah, this is all darkness ablaze. I see vivid voltage, scissor. I currently see my Pokemon cards more as an investment rather than being a store. I am uh, buying cards to hold. I'm still collecting the cards, you know. But uh, this part of my collection I have had for three years without selling anything and even attempting to sell anything. And now it is time for these cards to go to another home. Like I said, maybe it's in another episode as well. Maybe it's also the stage of collecting. I feel like I am uh, ready to go to a next level, a bit more expensive cards. Yeah, all these cards are near mint, but I am really, I, I've just recently purchased a fossil Articuno, for example. It is in uh, excellent condition. I know that on advance. I know that the Articuno is in uh, excellent condition, but I want. I am now speculating on that as well. I purchased it. I'm going to send it to PSA, and perhaps it gets an eight. I want to test my grading, pre-grading skills in uh, the open world in the in the wild. These cards are all for me too cheap to grade, but the difference between a PSA 6 is that I will lose money on the Articuno Fossil Japanese vintage card, you know, mystery of the fossil. And if I get a 7, I might make 3 to 4 bucks if I'm going to sell it, but uh, unrealized profit. My collection is also gaining value are getting more expensive or however you want to call it it's unrealized profit and you're allowed to have unrealized profit as a collector not everything has to go to zero and not everything if you make profit on something you are not automatically a store it is more about also um, the motivation of why you buy cards now i've been rambling for a bit guys owen cameraman won his first game Dennis Zengis or Kengis I really don't know how to pronounce it sorry Dennis won the first game and now uh, Dennis retaliated in the second game with Charizard let's see what we have here Ooh, some Korean cards this is a mix of Korean Japanese and English cards uh, Seniors Resolve you might have seen these cards earlier in other episodes guys and this is also that I haven't sold anything. I'm gonna fire sell it. I just uh, wait, I'm patient. And if I sell something, I'm gonna buy something new, hold it for a couple of years, and then sell it again and buy something new again. That is what collecting is for me. Keeping track of the value of the collection as well. I pulled this one myself. This is a GX card. Can't remember which, which set, but I pulled a couple of these cards myself. Rayquazas. 
all marked here and I put pictures online of each card so that people really can check out which one they want. Nice movie commemoration promo Chikorita. Got it actually from Japan, imported it uh, via eBay, via eBay. This one as well, paid about 20 bucks for it. You see here a small, I don't know what it is, it is in the card. It is not whitening, it is not damaged either, I don't know what it is. Many of these cards are off center like this one. It's the 1997 fan book, fan club promo that I think. Old back vintage Japanese, nice. Another puppy, we saw one already. Dancer, nice. I purchased 15 of these for 15 bucks. I see they are now 20 cents each. I lost a lot of money, 12 bucks on those, on that purchase. I'm trying to sell it again for, for one buck now. I only have one for sale, maybe if I put 10 for sale for 8 bucks or so I might manage to sell some. Terrible buy, terrible buy. Eggy slash, well, um, yeah like I said it's 1-1 one, one now, if you're interested in the AUIC just uh, check on, on YouTube Pokemon EUIC, it is about 2-3 to three days I think. And then it will, and then go to the live part, and you will be able to see it. Nice Shining Legends Japanese booster. Some sealed promos here, guys. Yeah, that's all I have for sale. And I think I'm gonna leave it like that, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Have a good one, have a good weekend, see ya.